honestly, I was so close to folding. Welcome back to another video from me, Gareth James for mttpokerschool.com. And today, what we're gonna look at is my biggest blunder during this year's scoop. So I don't know if many of you know, but this year I did manage to win a scoop, a 109 for just under $41,000. So it'd be pretty easy for me to say, yep, yeah, poker, completed it, mate. Let's move on, not worry about doing any study ever again. But we shouldn't do that. So we should always be focusing on things we can do to improve, working out how we can get better every single day. So a few days after my scoop success, I ran deep again in a $55, uh, made day two, and we're down to about the last 80 players. And I think there are something like 15,000 players left, and this hand came up. So what happens is the hijack opens, we call, and the big blind calls. So we go three ways to the flop. Uh, big blind checks and the original raiser bets. And we have two overs, a backdoor flush draw. So I go for the call and the big blind calls as well. So alarm bells have already started ringing here. Um, let's go to the turn. So the turn is the three of diamonds. This turn card is particularly good for the big blind. I uh, don't think there are too many six fives. I mean, certainly not six five off in either the original raiser's range or in my range. So uh, when the original raiser bets again, I'm looking at this now and thinking maybe this is actually the street to fold. But I thought if I'm going to call with two overs and a backdoor flush draw on the flop, then when I actually improve to a flush draw, I probably don't want to fold. But I really like looking at the situation now, it's really not a good situation for us. We could already be beat, you know, um, either player could already have a boat. Uh, the, the guy who's betting could be betting uh, the nut flush draw in which case a diamond is going to improve us to the second best hand and we're going to lose an absolute pile of chips. Um, and Or I guess like we could call here and improve to a diamond and the big blind already has a boat and we just lose a massive pot in that way as well. So it will be good to have a look in simple three-way in a moment to see what we should be doing with this hand, but I'll just uh, follow it through for a bit. So we call and the big blind calls and we do improve to a flush. Big blind checks, the original raiser checks, and we decide to go, I say we, it's me. I decide to go for this half pot value bet and I think this is a mistake. Um, honestly, this is probably the biggest mistake in the hand. I actually think that this is just a check, believe it or not. Um, but there are potentially other mistakes in this hand as well. Um, none more so than what happens next when the big blind jams and it folds back to us and we have a huge decision. Now, bear in mind, there's about, as I said before, there are about 80 players left in a 15,000 runner field. It's a pretty soft tournament. And honestly, I was so close to folding. In the moment, I just thought he could have enough 4X of diamonds type hands, maybe even a hand like 6-5 of diamonds as well that played like this so we could actually go for the call. Let's see the result. We called. He ends up with 8-7 off which in a moment we're going to see is a very bizarre way to have played a seven, um, just to call two streets and then obviously just drill the dream card, the card that gives me a flush and gives him a full house. Um, but yeah, I mean, this video is not about me complaining about that particular river card because actually I butchered this hand on multiple streets. So as you can see, he wins an absolutely massive pot. We're down to 14 big blinds and I busted, you know, an orbit or two later, something like 72nd place. So this hand was the biggest blunder of the whole of Scoop, and I'm hoping that we can learn from it today. Okay, so let's first start off with the original Razor's strategy, and you can see they mix between a small bet and a big bet. I bring my mouse up here, you can see check is green, small bet in the size that they chose in pink, and then the darker red color, uh, maybe terracotta, is, uh, is the big bet here. Um, so no big betting, just between check and, and small betting. And uh, just just a little bit off screen, uh, you can see uh, the small bet 25% and check 75%. And as I said, no, no big betting. Uh, so yeah, they go for the bet. And then we have a decision and I can have a look at King 10 suited and King 10 of diamonds specifically. And you can see it mixes between calling 66% and folding 34%. Neither line's really making any money. I mean, folding's always going to equal zero. Uh, probably folding is 
worth even more than zero actually in this situation given that we ended up losing a massive pot and losing a ton of equity in this tournament in again what was a really soft tournament and very very frustrating uh, to to make such a big mistake uh, this deep in a tournament but hey you learn from your mistakes right so let's see what we can learn so already we can see that king 10 with a backdoor flush draw wants to uh, mix uh, you can see i think that king 10 of spades just folds all the time with no backdoor flush draw and uh, clubs calls all the time diamonds mixes and and hearts mix as well so earlier on i said that i thought it was a really weird way uh, for the big blind to play eight seven off and the reason for that is because i would have expected them to raise a seven early on and let's have a look at this now so eight seven off raises as do basically every other trips type hand so you can see trips here going for the raise most of the time full house raising as uh, as well so yeah i would have expected to see a raise here and we didn't get that and um, i guess that you know throws everything off um honestly i didn't expect to see a hand this strong on the river i thought that he was very often going to have four x of diamonds but interestingly the kind of hands that i would expect him to have like queen four of diamonds on this run out is supposed to go for a raise on uh, on the flop there's not too much difference between calling and raising those hands i don't think i'm too far off to think that those kind of hands could land on the river um, but yeah let's carry on through the rest of the hand and see what happens so onto the three of diamonds turn then uh, the player one is going to check and you can see a lot of hands have disappeared from his range there were some calls a tiny amount of calls one percent of calls uh, so this is yeah this is normalized weight uh, you can see these are all the hands that he would get there with but not you know at full frequency if we absolute weight you can see that not many hands at all make it to this street uh, through a call so he checks and then the original raiser bets again and then we have a decision and i'm going to hover over king 10 and you can see king 10 is called zero percent of the time king 10 of diamonds fold 100 percent of the time so the flop was very very marginal you can go either way uh, with a flop call but the turn is a massive massive mistake according to the solver now maybe massive is a little bit overdoing it i mean if we look at the ev of a of a call here i mean it's not it's not a huge difference from uh, from folding but i think it's like the the potential of losing an absolutely gigantic pot here uh makes us just want to go you know to err on the side of folding uh so that we don't get ourselves into this absolute mess so we called and then if we look at what the big blind's supposed to do well again they don't have many calls and uh, in fact it's again just off screen you can't quite see it 0.04 percent calls uh, so basically raising or folding at this stage so i was thinking okay but they can have four x of diamonds so let's just have a look at some of those hands and um, you can see that uh, four x with a backdoor flush draw would have raised on the flop uh, eight four of diamonds let's see what that's doing uh, it's folding or raising so isn't even continuing through a call i think that maybe this player is going to play a little bit more passively than the solver so there's i think there's still a chance well the thing is i don't want to defend my play right i don't think it was good i think it was a massive blunder massive mistake but i'm just trying to you know give you some thoughts as to what was going through my mind at the time okay so now we land on the river and the big blind checks and you can see that eight seven off isn't in their range they should be raising the seven x on the flop uh, player two then goes for the check and you can see that they check most of the time as well it's actually 96 percent check and a tiny amount of betting and it folds to us and you can see that we shouldn't have king 10 of diamonds because we should be folding it on the turn but we might sometimes have king nine of diamonds so let's see what we're supposed to do with king nine of diamonds and if we do land here then we're supposed to check most of the time and doing a tiny bit of betting a half pot you know three percent of the time so already we can you know there are a lot of mistakes here right the flop was very marginal the turn should have been a fold but again it was kind of close but actually yeah let's just fold and, and move on to the next hand we still have heaps of big blinds and on the river we improved to a flush and we've got to recognize that actually it's not that strong a flush seems like a strong hand but in this situation where uh, the original razor has bet twice into two players the big blind has overcalled twice things aren't looking too good in this spot so we should have just checked we didn't we went for the bet let's see what happens after that so um it's I, I guess at this stage 
the the solver is going to just fall down completely because it's not supposed to have any strong hands at this stage. Uh, but yeah, he goes for the for the jam. Uh, the original razor folds, and then we have a decision. And King Nine of Diamonds uh, calls thirty three percent and folds sixty seven percent. Again, the EV is pretty close. Um, so yeah, anytime you see some mixing like this, the EV is going to be like this as well. So I mean, I guess calling here isn't that bad. But I think when you when it comes down to like losing a massive pot at this stage, these mistakes they all add up and and they compounded each other, right? So as I keep saying, like the flop was pretty close, turn was even closer, but probably just a fold, and then the river is just a check. Like right? we shouldn't be betting, but because we decided to call flop, call turn, and then we try to value bet river and we get jammed on, it's like oh he can, he can definitely have worse. We're gonna call here. We're gonna have a massive stack. We're gonna win his bounty. No. It's just uh, it's just not not good. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of big takeaways here, and I think the the biggest is that we need to recognise that in a in a heads up pot here, we I'm pretty sure we're going to be calling flop, calling turn, and then potentially being able to value bet river when we're in position. But the presence of another player makes everybody's ranges that much stronger, and therefore we need a stronger hand to be able to value bet uh, by the time the river comes. So I thought this was a really important video to make. Uh, I didn't want anyone to think that, you know, once you win a scoop, that that's it. You, you just stop studying and you don't ever make any mistakes ever again because you're the best player in the world. Like, it's very, very clear that I absolutely butchered this hand. And it, I think it would be easy for me to go, oh, we just got coolered. It was just, a, you know, an unfortunate river. If any other diamond, you know, we win a massive pot. And I mean, yeah, that that's true, right? Uh, we do, uh, because he still has trips. He probably doesn't fold them by the river. So we win that extra 16 big blinds on the river. It just happened to be the eight of diamonds that gave him a full house. But we had lots of opportunities to fold in this hand and we didn't take them. So yeah, we can't really bemoan our luck here. We've got to continue to play well. He played it in a really funky, bizarre way. Um, and yeah, maybe he did get lucky that it improved me to a flush and him to a full house on the river. But whatever, we made lots of mistakes and we've got to learn from them. So. If you get anything out of this video, it's make sure that you are continuing to study. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't think that, you know, just because you win a tournament that that's it. You know, you don't need to do any more study. I've still got lots to learn. I'm sure you've still got lots to learn. And I wish you every luck in trying to get to where you want to get to. All right, so I'm going to wrap things up there. Any comments, drop them down below. If you want to be harsh and tell me that I absolutely butchered this hand, please go ahead. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but yeah, if you want to tell me how bad I played this hand, then then go right ahead. Um, maybe I'll, uh, I'll laugh at some of the comments. Uh, but yeah, drop them down below. I'm going to wrap things up there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.